we know one more sector you looked at, uh, at least in India, uh, was microfinance, right? And you looked at that with the big SKF investment, it became a, a big multi-bag exit for the investors, at least in the initial phase. What attracted you to the SKF team back then? Sure. Frankly, uh, like I said earlier, I was looking at poverty and I was looking at energy. I spent some time with Professor Yunus in Bangladesh. I visited there, talked to borrowers, and I felt that innovation in the business model around financial services for the poor was really important. Um, and SKS, uh, interestingly, when I made the SKS investment, I offered to make it either as an investment or as a non-profit grant. It just depended on what the entrepreneur wanted. Okay. So you know, on, in SKS in particular, unfortunately the companies are into some troubles uh, mm -hmm. of late uh, uh, with the fallout between the founding team and controversies that have followed. Uh, how does that make you feel as an investor? What are your thoughts reading about this? In like? Well, uh, from my point of view, the business idea was right. Yeah. I still believe microfinance done for profit is the single most important thing we can do for poverty in this country. Yeah. You can take all the efforts of the government and they won't go as far as good microfinance programs. Okay. So what do you think might have specifically gone wrong in the SKS sure. case? Uh, two things. Uh, one, SKS could have done some things much better. Sure. They should have spent much more time caring about their clients. Yeah. Uh, most good companies care about their clients and SKS took their eye off the ball. Okay? But the biggest thing was politicians. Andhra politicians are a disaster for the Andhra people. Uh, uh, they've ruined one of the most valuable services people have in, uh, in, uh, in the state by using it for their own political ends. Right? It, it has been a disaster. Now, the fact is that politicians taking advantage of opportunities doesn't relate to whether it's for profit or not for profit. If you look at Professor Yunus, who's done it not for profit, the same thing happened in Bangladesh. When he had a large base, politicians tried to destroy him. I think it was Premier Zia who, um, uh, who tried to declare all loans below $100 forgiven sure, sure. to destroy Professor Yunus. And then recently we've seen the sh political shenanigans so it's not related to whether it's a for-profit or not. The, the common thread with microfinance is politicians getting involved. Yes. But there also clamors now for Vikram Akula to be to step down as this, as uh, from the board and so on and so forth. You being an early investor, what are your thoughts on it? I think I'm not on the board, so I can't speak to SKS. I'll leave that for the company to talk to you, what about. you What do you think SKS should do to uh, regain the confidence of investors? Well, what SKS has to do, see the biggest thing that hurt SKS is what Andre did. Uh, and frankly, I think the RBI has taken a sensible approach to it. And there's some legislation at the center level that will be a sensible legislation. And that will allow the companies as an industry to flourish again, hopefully. Okay. Uh, um, Unfortunately, uh, Andhra has destroyed microfinance in Andhra. But I think it's still doing well in other states. And it will continue to do well. And hopefully, the Andhra politicians will realize that they're hurting people a lot. And we still have faith in the SKS team to deliver in the future. I do believe the SKS team is a good team. Now, I don't spend a huge amount of time being just a shareholder and not a board member or... Um, or promoter or anything else. Um, I think they can do well. They're recovering from something like what Andre did is has its challenges. Right. And you know, I'm, I, I'm I'm hopeful the team will be able to overcome those. So, so we're not moving to Kosla Ventures. Uh, a lot of questions on when we know Kosla is going to invest more in India, right? And I'm sure that's a question you get a whole lot, right? Uh, what's your answer to that? When when will you see yourselves? When do you see yourself investing more in India? And what's your take on the opportunities here to invest in? So one, I don't invest in India. I don't invest in the U.S. I invest in global companies that operate everywhere. You know, when you're doing, we only invest in serious technology. It's funny, I look at a lot of technologies that come to me from India and I say there's not enough risk in it, sure. which means it's not a big enough breakthrough, which means that too many other people can duplicate the technology. Yeah. So it's 
funny way of saying I like more risk because it makes the problem harder for others to solve. If you build a great team that solves the problem, there isn't as much competition. Um, so we invest in global companies. So you're not seeing great technology here at this point? Well, so what I would say is it's been interesting and this was it to see much more uh, especially in the internet and mobile space, and we invest in all areas. We are about half our investments are in internet and mobile and IT, and other half are in, uh, uh, in clean tech. Uh, we're seeing suddenly a lot of excitement around product companies and uh, companies that might have global products. So I, I, I see very encouraging sign now. So is it, two years from now, there could be many more investments from Middle Coast and India? It's possible. From a macro Indian perspective, right, for, to see India's growth uh, and it's something uh, you being one of India's most successful immigrant Indians truly believes in. Uh, what do you think India must do, the four or five things India must do in terms of infrastructure or governance uh, for it to truly emerge uh, as a superpower or at least increase its growth and, and gain investor confidence globally? I'm one of those people who believes that it's easy to talk about all the things that will take a lot of money. And there isn't enough money. India already runs a huge deficit, and we don't want India to look like Greece. Huh? And so I look at what India can do that doesn't take money, like infrastructure investment. That takes money. Okay. Clearly, it'll help if we have that, but without that, we can still do very well if we free up our entrepreneurs. And I think most change. India is a pretty entrepreneurial culture, it's a very capitalist culture, it's familiarity with the English language make it much easier to participate globally, all those things uh, bode well for India. So trust the entrepreneur and support him. One parting piece of advice from Vinod Khosla to the entrepreneurs watching this show? My advice always is don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, I always tell people if, you, if you're afraid to fail, you'll never succeed. John F. Kennedy said only those who dare feel, fail greatly will succeed greatly. Vinod Kosla, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks.